we go. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shay Ali here with you on Inspired Online. Um, I'm sorry we've not been online for a little while, but um, hopefully you're enjoying getting out and around. And for Inspired Online today, I thought, what better inspiration to get out and around than the theme of nature? So I posted probably sometime last week about this beautiful um, new painting that I have in my home and it's of a wonderful willow tree and I wanted to invite the lovely Debbie Baxter uh, onto Inspired Online today because not only is she a super talented artist but this is a lady who just grew up in nature surrounded by trees. Um, her mum was a wildlife artist and not only has she taken the world of art and turned it into something beautiful, but also feeling, you know, that energy of nature and how can it really heal us, especially in a time where it's so important to let nature do its thing and let us do that. So um, really warm welcome to Debbie. How are you doing? And thank you for joining us. Hi, Shay. Thanks so much. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Um, so we're going to start with the inspired question of if you had to share your wisdom with the world in a nutshell, what would you say? Well, for me, it's about nature. So nature is the true healer. And if we could get in touch with it, if we can connect with it, it will offer us all the advice, all the information, all the intuition and all the physical, mental and soul food that we need if we learn how to connect with it, it is truly our guiding light. All right, so in terms of, there's a lot of people that go out in nature and unfortunately some that don't. Um, but say I'm going to the park. Um, I often go to Golders Hill, I love it there. And, um, you know, I, I obviously admire the beauty of things around me, um, but what if I've never, done that thing of tapping into my intuition or using the nature around me to tap in where would you start so it's it's really good to uh kind of open up your senses when you're in the nature and you know the first thing you do is just really feel your feet on the ground and then really feel your hands and breathe and just start to kind of open up your body and relax your body in in the nature and then your senses become a bit more acute and you start to look at things more closely and also um, that's part of what I do is like this translation so that people can start connecting more easily with the nature around them mm -hmm. so for example when people have done a tree reading um, I, I did a tree reading for a lady uh, not so long ago and she's lived in the same area for about 27 years and after the tree reading she completely connected with her tree and there were hundreds of them all around her and she said that was the first time I've ever actually seen these trees and really connected and because of the tree reading it was like a, a very special kind of communication that she's now having and she's kind of growing that relationship because now she understands what it's all about. And how did you start translating trees? Ah, well, I think, I think it sort of happened as a child because where I was born is in this very sort of uh, quiet, remote village away from the town and the cities. And it was like 360 degrees worth of forest, ancient forest. And my mother had a garden which was just full of foliage and trees, mature trees, like we had a giant willow tree overlooking the brook that ran through the garden and this enormous walnut tree and silver birches. And, and somehow they were my playthings. And I sort of grew up with this uh, interest in them. And I don't know where it comes from. It was, has just always been there since I've been a child. Mm. And my playground was the woods. So I'd go there and whenever I felt upset or distraught or out of balance I just knew instinctively that that was the place to go that would make me feel better and how did you get into the different trees having different messages ah oh, well it, it's funny because I paint the trees and I go back again year after year so there could be an ancient oak tree which is about a thousand years old and I'll keep going back to it and I'll see it through the seasons. And, and this is over a long period, this is over years and years. 
and that I sort of build up a relationship with them. And then after a while, I notice that I'm getting a different sort of energy off each tree. So the energy I get off an oak tree is so completely different to the energy I get off a, a silver birch tree. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of playing around with these differences and trying to understand them. And then after a while, the more I paint, the more clarity I get in the information so that eventually I'm painting a silver birch tree that I've been painting for about, I don't know, 20 years. And suddenly I'm getting a very clear dialogue and I'm and then I'm starting to understand something deeper and more powerful is coming through. And, and what I'm getting from all the trees is that they're absolutely desperate to give us this information. Wow. <laughs> and so you're almost channeling the information as you paint them. So that's fascinating as well. It's, it's really an energetic thing. It's very much to do with a silent language. It, it's not like, you know, the trees coming up to me and say, oh, Debbie, I'm going to have a chat with you. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very uh, slow burn. It's a very sweet uh, connection that comes from just being present. And, and you do, you need to be in a kind of state of meditation when you're, or when I'm painting, so that I can really pick up the nuances. And, and every tree is different, even if I'm doing, say I'll do a whole series of silver birch trees, one silver birch tree in a large woodland will be very, very different to a giant silver birch tree, say in a park. Mm. So it's it's really lovely to get that kind of nuances of differences, but you know, the essence of the tree still remains. Yeah. And uh, well, we have to ask this question: what is what is the tree behind you? <laughs> That's silver birch. Ah. So this is a, this is a woodland in um, this is Broxbourne Woods in Hertfordshire. And the beauty about silver birch trees is that they are absolutely brilliant at propagating the soil and making it fertile. So every young woodland that has you know, a whole forest of silver birch trees is literally fertilizing the soil to make way for other stronger trees like the beech and the oak. And uh, if you bring that into human terms, that's to do with really supporting growth in ourselves and in others. So it's a real tree that's about communication and, and self-expression. And from self-expression, we end up helping other people and influencing other people just by being our true nature. We offer, we offer things to the world, which is really precious. And that's the real meaning of the silver birch. It's all to do with self-expression. Beautiful. Now, I know you've got an amazing studio around you. Um, are you willing to show us some of your other stuff? Let's have a look. Sure. Um, I'll move things around a bit. So um, there's a lot of silver birch in here at the moment because um, that's kind of the series I've just finishing. I'm going to go on and do uh, hawthorn and magnolia. But you can oh, see wow. another silver birch there, which is a snowland. And that's, um, that's Broxbourne Woods as well, where there is an awful lot of silver birch trees. Um, so I've done an awful lot of these. Uh, and you can just see in the background, there's Sherwood Forest. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been actually. I've driven it's, through. It's, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see Robin Hood running through the Glen. No, I'm oh. only joking. <laughs> But um, I, I, there is a lot of what I try to do is sort of go to places and wait and look and learn. And it really is a process of meditation, if you like. So I'm sort of really learning about how to connect with the tree. And, and that takes a lot of time. So, um, so, for example, and things happen to me sort of quickly as well. So here's another one, oh, which wow. is this is um, this is oak trees. But these oak trees kind of guard the entrance to a pathway and the pathway is to do with your strength and endurance and how you can manage your own personal road. And this came to me, I was actually driving and I parked, uh, I had to stop because of the traffic lights and everything just happened at the right moment. The sun was just coming down. I'd stopped. I looked to my right and there it was looking at me and it just hit me in the heart yeah. and this, this painting is all about the pathway of life and taking the right road and supporting your direction. Mm -hmm. 
And it's about the message of the oak then. You mentioned it was about strength and endurance. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's twofold. It's really good for people who are wanting to be entrepreneurial or people who are suffering conflict and need to have a little bit more uh, a sense of strength and support. Um, it's really about right judgment and uh, having the support that's balanced. You know, when you're working really hard, especially for entrepreneurs, they're, they're kind of, I mean, I speak for myself, you just keep going and going and going and you think I can do it, I can do it. And then you might get to yeah. burnout. <laughs> so you don't want to get to burnout. And the, the oak tree is really powerful at holding your energy in balance and enabling you to make smart choices. Mm. So, I, you know, this, this, I, well, so I love a lot of things about this. One of the things that I love is, you know, that you started this as a child and often, you know, we have that childlike innocence and play. And I think children also have a very natural connection to uh, just playing with your intuition. Yeah. Well, you know, there's yeah. nothing wrong. They're just um, inventing stuff and thinking that that's all normal. And one of the beautiful things is that you, you know, piece that into adulthood um, and, you know, use it for something um, you're very meaningful to people. So um, I guess how, how do you do that? <laughs> how did I do that? Yeah. Um, I suppose if you, so for example, I used to, play under a willow tree it was it's such a huge tree I couldn't actually get my hands around the girth of it mm. and it sat right next to a brook and it was the tree that I would go to because I could climb right up into the top canopy I mean it was so big it was bigger than the house wow. but it had branches and limbs that would just like allow you to walk your stairway to heaven really mm. um, and it was completely shrouded in this long you know leafy fronds and when the wind blew, you, you sort of felt like you were on a ship and you were being held. And it, it was always the tree that I'd climb into when I felt like I needed to be nurtured. And I still remember that feeling and I still remember playing under it and always feeling safe. And the willow tree is about future perception. So I would climb into the tree and I'd dream, I'd dream about all the possibilities that I could have in my life. And I'd sort of lie back on, on one of the really strong branches and watch the trees and the light refractions coming in through the leaves and the swaying. And I'd just go off into a reverie of, of um, what I wanted to be, where I wanted to go, how life would turn out and all, you know, the delicious possibilities. And I'd kind of enter into this sort of uh, state of, sort of deep meditation where my mind would just go to zero mm. and from that would emerge inspiration so I might wake up and go oh I'm just going to go and paint that tree that I can see in the corner of the garden I'm just going to see if I can play with getting the bark and the light and the shadow and see if I can really get a, a feeling and understanding of it so I'd wake up with an inspiration and then just things would start to flow. And that's like, that was, that's the true nature of the willow, future wow. perception. <laughs> um, and you mentioned that you do tree readings. So um, how did you apply this from something that you can use for yourself to then translating it, you know, to using it for others? And how they um, oh yeah, thanks Shay, that's a lovely question. I think what happened is that, um, I felt like all of this was inspirational information when I was learning about the trees. And I mean, I didn't do it immediately. It just sort of came to me very, very slowly. And, and it comes from a desire to help people connect with their own sense of grace and their own sense of, um, of their soul and how important nature is in this whole process of learning about our lives and learning about ourselves mm. so nature is an amazing reflector and I sort of see trees as big memory banks of information that are there for us to connect to and 
learn about ourselves. So it's not like, oh, you go to the tree and the tree's the crutch. It's like you go to the tree and you learn more and more about yourself and about your uh, importance on this earth. And I feel like the, the, the thing that really, I suppose, drove me towards putting this out there was this, this sense that people feel we've got nature and we've got humans and humans are destroying the planet. So therefore we're kind of separate. And that whole idea of us being separate to nature, which has seemed to have culminated in such a high degree in the last, what, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. that we are just separate and nature is over here and we're here somewhere else. And I felt like this separation is causing us so much anxiety, stress, ill health, negativity, that what we need is to be reminded about how connected we are and how important it is for us to understand value, nurture ourselves, nurture the planet, connect with the divinity inside of ourselves and not be dis dislayed by this kind of sense of materialism where we get caught out and caught up in a sense of losing connection with nature. Mm. And so it became like a really important thing for me to get that back and the way I, I I'm doing it is to remind people about this personalized message mm -hmm. that wherever you are in your life right now there is a tree that will support you in this process of life mm -hmm. and it's a powerful powerful connection mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um how do you how do you get people to pick their tree how do you know which one's the one so it's, it's a really lovely process because obviously my, my, uh, my, the thing that I do is pictorial, right? I, I paint paintings. That's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So it's a very visual process and people choose a painting because it's a, an emotional reaction and it is a language all of its own. So it's a language that doesn't need words. And that is the language of the trees. If you think about it, trees don't need to have a conversation with you. You just know it in your intuition. And, and it's such a sacred part of you. And it's the part that's that language is so important to learn and to connect with because it's your guiding light really for your soul's journey. And so that really helps to, to kind of bring those that together through the visualization so somebody will just look at the trees and they'll choose one that feels right and it could be anything it could be memories from the past it could be they just like the shape or they just love the color or they just love the pattern and all of these nuances make up that that special language of connection right. and then they choose it and that's enough then we get going then we start to find out why <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the one that I ultimately chose was the willow because I did this process with you as well yeah um, yeah I guess they're all beautiful you know all, all of them and uh, I don't know how was it how was it for you having the willow um, and, and now having the willow in your space after having that reading yeah I um well when I saw it it felt um I was going to use the word familiar, actually, because um, I'd had uh, a meditation where I, it was maybe not the same tree or maybe not the same angle, but um, uh, and the meditation was a while ago, but something similar to that had come up and it reminded me of the energy of that. Um, so in a way that the, the other ones didn't, <laughs> I guess. And yeah then, yeah it was an emotional reaction because that meditation was really beautiful um and it felt very nurturing actually is the word and you said that that was part of the energy of the willow yeah, yeah. Uh, and that vision that i'd had that's what it felt like um <clears throat> so when i saw it you know there was a uh, an instant oh wow um and then um you got me to sort of just really sit with it for a bit and tune into it and it brought back those sort of memories of nurture um, isn't it interesting that um you can really instinctively rely on that so and it is a language in a way it's beautiful that you can just rely on that and, and know that that's your truth yeah. 
and then yeah that is I put it where I can you know it's up where <laughs> I wake up in the morning and that's one of the first things I see so <laughs> so knowing that you've got that there in your life every day how, what does it feel like to wake up to it does it does it remind you of of what you want or does it remind you of what you have or what's your feeling when you're looking at it every day Oh, interesting question. I was supposed to be interviewing you there. No, but I, I'm <laughs> always so interested because it's it just has a magic of its own. I almost don't have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I, when I put it up, it made me feel so happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. amazing. Yeah, they, they put it up and I was like, oh, you know, this place feels really magical and beautiful. Um, wow. So that was the initial feeling. And I get up and I think it just makes me smile, you know um amazing and yeah so that's that's a good feeling to wake up to in the morning yeah than, yeah you know in, in my line of work thinking about okay this client needs this today is 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 fine but it's not maybe the best waking thought to have yeah <laughs> um or looking at your phone is uh, another not great way to wake up so. well I suppose also because you know the, the pictures are so kind of um enchanting or can be that they can bring you back to the past they can bring you back to something like you say your meditation which is a good place to be so there's a calmness about it but I guess and this is what I'm hoping is that it brings you back to this the feeling you have when you're in nature mm. and they, they did this study of um, people in a hospital who had had heart surgery and they, they did a twofold study. So one half, about four patients were put in a room with a window which overlooked trees. And the other four were put in a, in a room that had no windows whatsoever. And the people who had the trees to look at were on less medication, left the, the hospital more quickly after surgery. Mm-hmm. And, and it just goes to show that we are so connected to nature and its, its powerful healing force that just the visualization or just getting to see reminds us of something that's very uh, deep inside of us that we relate to instantly. We don't need any words. We don't need any explanation. We know if we walk through the woods, we're going to feel better. And so (laughs) my next question is going to be, obviously, you know, we've been, um, or we're not on lockdown right now, but, um, you know, off our lockdown restrictions have varied over the yeah. last just over a year now um and you know I've seen it's uh impact so many people's mental health which is very sad and yeah um yeah you know I was wondering if you can say a few words to that if you're one of these people that is feeling quite alone or uh, hopefully not anymore hopefully you're going yeah it. um you know what what can you do there's a there's a saying that when you're out of sorts bury your hands in the soil and and move move your hands in the soil and for me it's about how can you find a way to connect with nature that is that feels nourishing and then look at the five elements to do with that so which element is your element so it could be water so for example if you feel happy when you're near water then do an activity that helps you connect with it. You know, it could be paddling, could be cold water swimming, could be paddle boarding, fishing. Or if your element is earth and you just love to be with your hands growing things, then you can do that even if you're in a flat and you've got perhaps a window ledge and you're making and growing plants. Mm -hmm. It's about what helps you connect with nature it's like the keys that bring you down in towards the element that most speaks to you so if it's for example air then this painting is great because you're lying on your back and you're connecting with the sky and you can see the wind blowing through the top of the tree canopy and it reminds you of that element of air Mm. and space and light so in terms of mental health, anything you can do that connects you to nature will be your guiding light and will help you through this really difficult stage of having to sort of be with yourself if you live alone. 
to be with yourself for so long and, and over, under such a long period of time where you feel like there may not be any change. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to get out there and connect, find your element, find what speaks to you and then really go for it. That's <laughs> um, different question for you. Sure. Um, so obviously my, my tree is in the bedroom uh, for me. Um, but I'm sure that you work for, you know, families and stuff as well. So um, how would, you know, if it were a couple or if it were a family, how do they pick their tree? How is it? Um, oh, I love that question, Shane. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's really interesting because each, each painting has a different resonance. So you have the same essence of the tree, but it could be different. So, for example, um, there's a couple I know who are relationship coaches and they've each chosen a different tree, but these trees interrelate in a very special way. And the way I'm going to paint the trees for them is a way to connect them. They will be two different paintings, but they will sit side by side. Oh. So it's such a be I'm so excited about doing these paintings. So one painting will be about a very special connection to spirit and to the divine. And the other painting will be about a very special connection to the heart. And together they are really like um, hand in glove and together they offer this sense of hope. So can you imagine um, as a relationship coach, what you want to support in your clients is a sense of hope, a sense of growth, and a sense of getting through the difficult times so that you get to a place of harmony. Mm -hmm. And when you've got the divine on your side and you've got the heart space on your side, there is nothing but grace in between. And, and so there's this beautiful sense of absolute divine love, which I'm so thrilled to be painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that, that I think you stole thunder from one of my other questions, which is, you know, um, obviously when we did the reading, we had, you know, some trees to, to look at and to see what energy you connect to. But when someone um, comes to you with a commission from scratch, like how do you get into? Oh, yeah, them? yeah. So I work with them. We do a tree reading. We find out what their tree is and we find out what's really important for them right now in their lives what's important for them to resolve what's important for them to connect to what gives them energy what gives them sustenance what gives them a sense of growth and development in their lives if, if that's what they're looking for and then we we really work together to find the tree sometimes people already know what their tree is and I go out there to the place where the tree is and I spend a lot of time with the tree and I'll be drawing and sketching and painting it and connecting with it. Other times it's a memory of a place and I'll find where that memory is and we'll work together. And so we'll also work together on interior. So interior colors are really important. You want a painting which sits in harmony with your current space. Mm. Um, and you also want a, a painting that really feels like it's, it's part of you. So we do a lot of work towards making that connection. What does that mean? So doing the meditation. So I've created meditations around the trees so you can really get this beautiful connection or this silent language. So you start to get the translation and really bring it into your own being. Mm -hmm. And then also if there's anything coming up, then I work with that person to kind of resolve it. So we really get this beautiful process of, letting go, go of old stuff that's unwanted and bringing in the power and the energy of the tree, which really gives you this sustenance and sense of purpose and growth. Um, so it's like a process. It's, it's a really beautiful sort of connection between the person and the artist. It's like, here I am as the translator, really wanting you to get the message of the tree. And then the person who's really willing to hear what that message is and open their doors and have it in their space. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was wondering if you could speak to the differences between, um, you know, actually going out to the woods and, you know, looking at it on one of your paintings. Ah, oh, great. Th thank you. So I think, you know, we all walk in the woods well if we do if we if we ever have the opportunity to walk in the nature and walk in the woods 
Um, but it could be that you go to the woods and your mind is quite full and you've got a lot of things on your mind or you've got family and there's a lot of sort of um, so not focus on the outside world, really just, you know, dealing with what you've got and you're just plodding along. And then what I try to do with my work is to try and make that bridge so you get a sense of more connection. So, for example, if you if you were to choose the beech tree and then you were to walk into a beech tree forest, you would know the nature of the beech tree and somehow it, it kind of bridges that sense of who you are in that space and it becomes a lot more of a beautiful experience. So it's not just going for a walk in the woods, it's more like going for a walk with a friend <laughs> or with something that's very beautiful and supportive. Yeah, something like that. There's maybe a bit of an unfair question, but where do you think is the most special place that you've been? Oh gosh, that's a great question. I can tell you immediately. Um, there is the most enchanting place. And I, every time I go there, I all the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and I literally, I just have to stand there and listen. I can't do any very often I've been there to sketch. I have to put it down. I just literally go into a space of deep meditation. Um, it's, where is it? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, want to um, <laughs> I want to know where it is. I, I would actually I would definitely take parties there because it's uh, it's not very well known. Um, but it is it's an ancient oak tree forest it's an oak tree glade so it's about 3,800 year old oak trees wow. in this sort of pasture land and they are huge and completely misshapen and and just sort of like centennial beings and they're beautifully spaced around each other so they get light because oak trees love to have this kind of huge circle of light but it's almost like you go there and nothing phases you. You feel very strong, very centered, very held. And I just literally walk around this sort of pasture land, looking at the trees, looking at the shapes, looking at the light coming through the canopies. And I'll go there every single season. And every time I go there, I get something. And it's a stillness and a sense of my own uh, purpose. I, it's just the most magical place. I've painted it three times. Oh, wow. one, one was this huge, it was about um, a metre 550 um, of a whole frieze of the oaks, um, which has gone to a nutritionist who works so, so hard. I think she does about, gosh, 20 clients a day. Um, she's very committed to her work and it's the perfect paintings for her because it's all about holding her energy and keeping her strong so that she can serve other people mm. <laughs> beautiful um I'm, I'm I was wondering if you'd ever been to the redwood forest in America yeah uh I, I've been to Canada okay. and I I've seen the redwoods in Victoria and they are overwhelmingly beautiful yeah. because uh, not only, I mean, can you imagine in England, we have forests, but probably those forests don't expand more than, I don't know, several hundred acres, but you go to the woodlands in uh, Canada and it's like the whole country is trees and just little bits are the town and the city. And you look at the map and you think, well, I could really get lost in there. <laughs> No, it's incredible. It was really incredible. Obviously, I haven't been able to go for a while. But yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Very, very lovely. Um, so, uh, we're coming up to our time together today. It's been such a pleasure. Um, I was wondering if there's any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience. Um, I think it's really about trusting a process of connection and to know that you're just you're not separate from nature you belong this is your birthright this is uh your true sense of who you are and nature is your guiding light if you'll let it in and if you find it difficult to let it in then come to me and i will help you as that's really what i want to be doing in my life indeed 
And um, how can people connect with you? Okay, so if you go to uh, artdkbaxter.com, you can connect with me by uh, filling in the form and I will uh, connect with you and we'll find out and do your tree reading, find out what tree is your ally tree. Wonderful. So <laughs> artdkbaxter.com, please do go and visit Debbie. Uh, it's a very, very lovely experience. Um, and to everyone watching this today, thank you for tuning in to Inspired Online. Uh, if you'd like to see a few more interviews, uh, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Inspired Sage, um, also our YouTube channel, Inspired Sage. So it's been such a pleasure to have you and we'll see you again soon. Lots of love. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.